In this video, I will go over how to have a systematic approach to betting on college basketball using positive expected value bets. Hello everyone, Jonathan here with Excel Help Now, and I have another sports betting video for you, positive expected value for college basketball. So um, it's going to be a similar format to what I've gone over in the NBA series and the hockey NHL, where I show we have drop-in pinnacle odds, and then we'll have a money line spread in total look to be able to do our line shopping and be able to identify matchups that provide positive expected value opportunities. So with college basketball, it's kind of unique versus the other professional sports is there is a lot of disparity with matchups and there's a lot of games. So if we flip over to, to Pinnacle for today, this is opening night of college basketball. You'd see 114 games. So as a positive EV better, it's, it's really kind of daunting to understand how to go about approaching that many matchups, how to do it effectively and be able to make use of your, your money wisely. So uh, what I would suggest is if you're if you're going to do college basketball first is you got to know market with. So I'm going to just show, walk through some examples here. I'm going to copy in just um, a couple games to start. So I have this model built. It's similar to the, the NBA basketball one. Drop in our pinnacle odds. I grabbed a, a handful of games, and then we can go over here. I'll clear out all this data. So the first matchup we have is Georgia, Oregon. So we can just type in Georgia and Oregon. In today's date. Okay, so that matchup, 39 market width. So plus 225 on Georgia and then Oregon as the favorite at minus 264. So close matchup. That's one of the premier opening night games. So pretty small market width. This is definitely a, a game that would be Smart to bet on, and you could take these implied win percentages and say that's a good basis to, to line shop on. And then if we flip over and see maybe the next game, so Northern Arizona, Connecticut. Let's let's see what those odds are. Northern Arizona versus UConn. Okay, so here here is where market width really comes into play. So you can see we have a market width of two thousand one hundred and six, where we have. Northern Arizona at plus 2,093, and then UConn at minus 411.99. So 95.5% win percent versus 4.5. And so if you don't line shop, and I have this set up where you can define a, a max market width, and it'll highlight whenever it's, it's above that threshold. So I like to start out with 50, and I think it's really critical at the start of college basketball season to have a low market width just because – there's going to be so many non-conference matchups that you're going to see 95 plus percent win percent is chance on the the favorite and the math is going to work out where maybe this is a positive EV bet whenever you look at it line shopping but the reality is it's not just because there's so little confidence in these lines by pinnacle that you don't want to just take this at face value so let's let's go see what our break-even odds are plus 2142. Let's see if anyone's offering longer odds than plus 2142 on this matchup. Okay, so I'm over here on Sportsbook Review, and they have really uh, probably about the best way to do line shopping manually is they have it in tables by spread, money line, and totals. So we go down here to that Northern Arizona Connecticut game. Fandles offering plus 350. So if we type that in up here. I have built out the Kelly criteria so you can know exactly how much to bet based on the odds that are being offered. So right now, based on the Kelly criteria, we should bet at $8.65 for Northern Arizona to beat UConn. We're saying that they have implied win percentage of 4.5, but FanDuel is saying they only have 2.78% chance. So anytime that your implied win percentage is greater than your sportsbook win percentage, that is a positive EV bet. So Without looking at market width right now, you would wager $8.65 based on a thousand account value and a Kelly adjustment factor of 0.5 on Northern Arizona to have a massive upset. And the reality is when you're EV betting, you got to factor in market width. Otherwise, you're going to see a ton of these for college basketball. This is the biggest mistake I've made in positive EV betting last year was I went through college football and NFL season, made a good return, was you know, sold on the positive EV approach. Then I got into college basketball and saw all these 
positive EV bets and just started placing all these bets on massive underdogs, didn't take into account market width, and I lost a bunch of money. And so the big takeaway is, yeah, maybe the math works out where this, in the long run, if you have 100 seasons, yeah, maybe Northern Arizona, Arizona is going to win a five out of 100, and you're getting odds that say they should only win two or three times. So yeah, in the very long run, yes, it, this would be a bet to take. But the reality is with variance and looking at it in a, a single season, this is not a smart bet to take. So that's the biggest takeaway I have. College basketball market width is very important. It's especially important to start the season. So I would definitely suggest look at tight line. So 39 is a great matchup to, to bet on with, but you know, keep it capped at 50 to start as you get into the conference slate and the matchups and the teams become, uh, you know, more defined and pinnacle becomes more confident in your lines. And you could, you could bump that up to 75 or a hundred, whatever uh, your tolerance is, but just know the higher the market with you're willing to tolerate, the more, uh, very variability you're going to have in your outcome. So just wanted to really highlight that, that it, that's the biggest key with, college basketball versus any other sport is market with is so important if you're doing money line bet. Uh, so that's, that's just a highlight. Um, we can see if that Georgia Oregon game has an EV bet on it while we're, we're here. We can find it. There it is up at the top. So we have plus 236 minus 236. And so we actually do have a EV bet on Oregon. So points bets offer minus 225. So let's plug that in. That was points bet minus 225. All right, so $15.96 we should place on Oregon to beat Georgia. We're saying they have a 70.2% chance where points bet saying they only have a 69.23% chance. So there's your positive EV bet. And so... You can see with college basketball, there's going to be a ton of opportunities. I just grabbed a handful of games and both of the matchups have a positive EV bet. So I would definitely suggest if you're going to do college basketball, um, don't get overwhelmed by the number of matchups with, with pinnacle is if you're going to use pick up my model, or if you're going to do this yourself, grab a couple games, maybe just go through the time slot. So just look at four or five in isolation, copy them in, run through the line shopping, and then go on to the next block. Don't feel like you've got to bet on every single game. There's going to be a ton of opportunities. You could find a cluster of games that you can see some of these don't even have money line offer because there's just there's such a big, look at the spread on that, plus 32.5. So definitely don't even waste your time on copying in and looking at Tennessee Tech versus Tennessee because there's just, there's just not a game that you're going to make money in because it's such so much noise in that matchup. But you can go through, grab a handful of games, plug them in, and see what comes out as far as opportunities. And that's on the money line side. And then on the spread, so this is where I think that what I've built here is really valuable and is going to save a ton of time. So Pinnacle saying Georgia, Oregon is a six handicap. So if we go up to the top here, plus six, minus six. And then if we go over to Sportsbook Review, and we can see that we have 6.5, 6.5, 5, 6.5, 6, and 6. So a lot of variability in that spread line. And so if you wanted to do this manually, you would have to go into Pinnacle, grab each one of these, devig it, find the break even, and then go back and compare it to what each sportsbook's offering. Or what I've built out is I've extrapolated the odds where I'm going to take the base Pinnacle and I'm going to go up. 2.5 and minus 2.5 on the point value spectrum. So you can see that we can see the 6.5 at the break even odds of minus 102 plus 102. So you're not having to go in and manually do that with Pinnacle. I've created a logic where I'm going to extrapolate that out. And then you can see our plus five minus five on Caesars. And so there's another EV bet right there. So plus five minus five, both at minus 110. And so we can go up here, type in Oregon. We're getting minus 110, and that was at minus 5 spread on Caesars. So the break-even odds were minus 125, but we're getting minus 110. So we are getting a positive EV bet with a 55.5% chance for Oregon to cover that spread versus 
Caesars only saying they have a 52.38. And so we should wager $32.57 with a thousand count value and Kelly adjustment factor of 0.5. So another EV bet, and we're only looking at two matchups here. And so the more you, you bring in and drop down and copy, it'll flow through to the spread table here. So just wanted to highlight that's how this works. And that's what I think just really proud of how this models turned out where it saves a ton of time and allows someone to be able to do manual EV shopping without having to do a subscription service and do it pretty effectively as far as the time commitment goes. And then if we go over to totals, the same logic. So um, it's going to have the, the base 140 over under for the Georgia Oregon game. I'm going to extrapolate that out plus 2.5 minus 2.5 on the total. And that'll be for every matchup that you want to look at. We can see if there's another EV bet on that matchup. And so there is no market with um, need for a spread or total that's embedded in the value itself. So uh, we could look at this Northern Arizona Connecticut game actually. So that is at 142. And so we can see we have Bet Rivers is at 141 at minus 112. Let's see what that looks like. So that is not an EV bet. 42.5, nope, no EV bet there. And then the Georgia-Oregon game was at, let's see, we got 139, 139.5, 140.5, so a lot of movement there. 139.5, minus 110, minus 110. So points bet would be, yep, there's a, oh, Caesars, 139, here we go. So we want to take the over, we just type in Georgia, minus 110, and that was at 139, and that was on Caesars. So we got another EV bet here. So the base was 140, and we are getting Caesars at 139 at minus 110. 139 at minus 110, so $12.94 bet, 53.6% chance for the game to go over 139 points versus Caesar is saying that's only a 52.38% chance. So that's where the EV bet is. So we basically just went through one matchup and found an EV bet on money line, spread, and total. Uh, pretty quick too. So you can see how this is, you're able to get a lot of bets out and co high confidence bets too. So you're not having to, to place bets on a massive upset of Northern Arizona taking, taking out Connecticut day one. So just wanted to highlight, this is the model I built. I'm pretty proud about how it works. And uh, I have a NBA model that looks very similar. And so one other thing I'll highlight is the, the movement here for the totals. You can see I have half point value of five. And then on the spread, I have a half point value of nine. So you can see these increments go up in nine for spread. And I went through, um, to odds jam and they have a half point calculator for NCA basketball spread. And I went through every single spread value and total value to find out what's really that average. And it's 8.89 and five. And so I'm just rounding that to nine and five. And that's, those are the same values that I saw with basketball. So those are just really good proxies. And I've gone through and done a lot of testing with pinnacle and done the manual movement of odds. And they're just, they're really good values to, to use. Um, versus having to do it manually. So that's where the the, the movement values are from. But yeah, that's, that's the model. That's college basketball betting. So big takeaway is one, uh, market width. I mean, that is the biggest thing. If you're gonna bet on college basketball, you've got to factor in market width on the money lines. Um, spread in total, you can just take it whatever they are. There's a lot of variability that we saw. I mean, we just went through just two matchups. We, can, we already got, um, several good EV bets. So you can go through, um, you don't have to bet on everything. Don't feel overwhelmed. Um, look out, grab a handful of games, copy them in, flip the room, see what makes sense as far as betting opportunities. Um, and also just don't try to grab everything at once. One, it doesn't seem to, Pinnacle seems to block all the copying in the mass amount of data. So um, just grab a half dozen or so at a time and copy it in for whatever reason. Uh, college basketball doesn't seem to copy in as cleanly as NBA or NFL does, but just wanted to highlight that. But look at a couple games, find some EV bets, move on, because the lines move. So if you try working on getting every single matchup 
brought into the model, lines will have moved by the time you do your line shopping and you may be not placing an EV bet after all. So just look at a couple games. Don't get overwhelmed. There's going to be tons of opportunities. There's tons of games. And it's it's a great, it's a great betting sport um, and league. Just make sure that you consider market with. Don't get overwhelmed uh, and just be smart. Make sure you stick to the plan. Stick to the Kelly criteria. Only do EV bets. And when March rolls around and March Madness is going on, you can look look back and have made a lot of money in the college basketball season, um, taking a systematic approach using plus EV betting. So hope you found this helpful. Um, I'll have a link in the description to this exact model. It, it includes the money line and the spread totals. Like I said, it's copy and paste values for the pinnacle odds. I got a dashboard here if you want to do some slicing and a bet tracker. Um, so that's all available on my Etsy page. Otherwise, thanks for watching and God bless.